I'm Corinthia. I'm Chastity. And I'm Chelsea. And we're sisters. Corinthia and I are twins, and today's our 28th birthday. Yay. And Chelsea's our younger sister. She is 10 years younger than us. And so today we just wanted to do a video and share our experience. Um, all three of us had coronavirus, we beat the coronavirus together as sisters, and we just felt like we had a unique story that we wanted to share. Okay, so we'll start with Corinthia because she is the first person who contracted the coronavirus and we actually got the coronavirus from Corinthia. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you start and just, you know, explain what happened. Okay, so I am a healthcare worker. I'm a physician assistant and I was still going to work every day um, trying to take as much precaution as I could whenever the pandemic kind of arose. Um, I have an 11 month old just trying to do the best I could to make sure that neither one of us got the virus. Um, I'm blessed that my grandparents keep him throughout the day. So I started allowing him to go to my parents' house and my parents and my little sister because they were at home working from home, going to school from home. So I took him over there just to reduce the exposure to my grandparents going in and out of their home. Um, because they're both, you know, over 70 and that was deemed the high risk population. Um, as far as going to work, I would wear like my regular clothes to work, change into scrubs when I got to work, and leave those scrubs there. Come home, take a shower um, before I saw the baby. Um, just trying to do you know the best I could, you know, wearing a mask and then social distancing when I you know when I whenever I was at work and then just doing my normal routine, you know, grocery store grocery store and things like that. Um, and it might sound kind of crazy, but I never really considered um, kind of being sick from the coronavirus. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, for me, I was just kind of thinking two extremes. I felt like, you know, I'm going to work every day. I know I'm with a high risk population. Um, either if I get the coronavirus, either I'm going to be like critically ill or like might not make it from the coronavirus, or I could have the coronavirus and like not know about it and just be perfectly fine, right. um, asymptomatic. Yeah. So for me, when I actually um, contracted the virus, I started off with like extreme and um, I just felt so tired. Um, the night actually when I started experiencing the symptoms, we had planned a Netflix night. <laughs> my sisters and my mom were coming over to watch Netflix and um, we started watching the self-made Madam C.J. Walker series and I don't even know if I made it through the first No, um, you didn't. Yeah. She just slept through the entire <laughs> four episodes. Yeah. Okay. But that's really not uncommon for me to fall asleep during my It's not. So yeah. it's easy. So of it. Um, but little did I know that was like the beginning of my symptoms um, after I, um, I contracted COVID. Um, and then so after that, fatigue worsened. Um, so the next day I had a fever and cough and sore throat. And that's actually when I went and got tested for um, COVID. And the following day is when my test came back. Came back quick. Yes. Way quicker than I would have expected. Um, but the next day is when I found out that I had the so by this point, you know, it's like, oh, I've seen my son, I've seen my parents, I've seen my sisters. And so um, it was a little scary um, initially, just that, you know, not knowing after I um, tested. And then actually when I got the results, it was just like, boom, you know. Um, because like I said, I didn't think, I figured, okay, if I have it, um, you know, I probably won't show any symptoms. They were saying that um, babies and kids weren't really, you know, showing many symptoms at all or, you know, weren't really in that high risk population. So I was thinking, okay, I may have it and not know it and my son's probably okay. Um, but then whenever I actually started to show symptoms, was, that's really when things got real for me. Yeah. So. yeah, and it was a lot. It was a lot for all of us. I remember yeah. I was like, we just left her house. Like, if she has it, I have it. Like, that was like, my initial thought because you just hear so much about it, you get it from everywhere. You have no idea how you pass it along. When she actually got it, I was like, oh, you know, now this like has hit as home as it can hit, like it's here. Um, we have to deal with this. And I knew that I could not start watching the news at this point. I could not rely on like medical science because everybody was saying something different. And um, so the first thing I did was just like go straight to the word. Um, and I went to James and I was like, what do you do if someone is sick? says pray so I was like we gotta pray um, we had a lot of family meetings and prayer calls and then I was like you have to reach out to other people who you know can like get in a prayer for you and so that's what I did and that's the only thing that really calmed me down I was 
reaching out to people, not just like telling people, her, not just telling people her business, like, oh, my sister tested positive, but like really reaching out to people who I knew could get a prayer in on her yeah, behalf. Honestly, on your behalf. Yes. yes. And that's yeah, so important to have those people in your life who yeah. you know can get a prayer in for your, for your family, for you, and to really encourage you in that moment. And so the hardest part for me was having to isolate myself and not be there with her as she went through the symptoms. Right. <laughs> um, we didn't know if it was going to progress any further. We didn't know anyone personally with the coronavirus. And so just having to go through that, knowing that someone so close to you is so sick and you don't really know a lot about why what's going on was the hardest part for me. And then we didn't really have a lot of information. Her doctor told us that we needed to self-quarantine for 14 days because we had been exposed to the virus. And I think it was your doctor who told us that between five to seven days after we were exposed to the virus and we could start getting symptoms. So right. we were like, you know, when, when were we over there? Yeah. How many days have passed? Mine were so spot on. I was like, one, two, three, four, five. Like, yep, that's the day I started getting symptoms. And it was so crazy because one day me and Chastity were on the couch watching movies literally all day, could not get off the couch. And then going back and looking at it, we realized like that was our first day of symptoms. Yeah, we had fatigue. That was the first symptoms that we had, and then Chelsea ended up getting a fever that night, and then I had a fever the next morning, and so we went to get tested because we were pretty sure we had the coronavirus at that point because we had been test, exposed. And, oh, yeah, the that test was absolutely terrible. So we got drive up, drive through testing. So we called our doctor. He scheduled for us to get a drive through testing. So you go up to the drive through, <laughs> and you pull up. You show them your ID. And you don't get out of your car, and so yeah, you lay down your window, and they just kind of have you lean back a little bit, and they stick this long tube up your nose. It went so far back, like I choked. Yeah. I'm like, like it was just so far back, and I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so weird. Um, and then after that, like it went up my nose, felt like it was in my brain, and I had like a nosebleed for the rest. Yes, of the her day. nose was bleeding so much. Um, but so brutal. Yeah, but through that experience, Chelsea and I did say like, wow, that was like really dope for the healthcare workers just to see them out there. It was yeah. like raining that day. Yeah. We got tested. They had like rain boots like still out there. Right. Like making sure that people, you know, got tested, yes. knowing that we were sick and like, you know, hope you feel better. Like it was, so that was really cool just to like see them on the front lines right. really because we had just been in the house. Um, um, so that was really our first experience to see people actually on the front lines. So that was really cool. Um, so then once we got symptoms, um, I was staying at my parents' house throughout this time when we were doing the self-quarantine. And so once we um, got symptoms, got tested, our test results came back the next day as well. And our doctor was like, well, all three of you all can just fight this out together because you all three have the virus. So each one of you do not have to self-isolate during this time. So that's really just kind of how this whole thing just really shifted for us. Yeah. Like we're gonna all go to Corinthia's house and it was just it was a really good experience for us because I live about 45 minutes away from um, Corinthia. I live about an hour away from my parents and so I don't see them all the time and so being just with my sisters in this space you know even though we were sick you know it just was so much better being together and we right. see so many families like having to communicate with their loved ones via FaceTime when they have coronavirus but the fact that we were all three able to go through it together um, and support one another, it was a really good experience. Um, you know, luckily I was able to um, stay home. Um, I didn't have to be hospitalized, thank God. Um, none of us had to be hospitalized, right. which is just uh, a, blessing. a huge yeah. blessing. Huge blessing. Um, all three of us have asthma, and so that already kind of put us at a little higher risk. Um, but luckily our immune systems were strong enough that we were able to fight it without having to be hospitalized. You know, no ventilators. That's just such a blessing. Like, yeah. You know, um, that all three of us were just able to, you know, recover from it. Um, but, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, even still, it was just kind of like, okay, once you test positive, it's like isolate yourself and, you know, try to take care of yourself. Um, supportive care, like, you know, drinking fluids and monitoring your temperature and, you know, taking fever reducers and making sure you eat. And that whole thing, but that was just kind of like the scary part because it was just kind of like, you know, now what? And I think um, by the time they came, I was probably like a seven days in to having the virus. And so my symptoms were still waxing and waning, but I actually felt a little bit better than I did previously. And so I was 
actually able to kind of give them some information like what I did to try to beat it because I mean basically once you have it and you don't have to be hospitalized you're just like at home like trying to allow yourself to feel better and so you're basically just treating the symptoms so I was like able to say like okay you know y'all try to get up you know <laughs> um you know try to eat something you know making sure they stay hydrated and um we're checking our temperatures actually checking our oxygen saturation with little finger finger pulse ox our readers and so um, I think that was a good thing too. That we, even though we all three had it, um, we were at different stages throughout the virus. Sure, and yeah. so even for our emotional health too, because even like our immediate family, our extended family, like it hit us hard because we were the only. I was the only person that I personally knew yeah. with the coronavirus, yeah. you know. And so you know, for our family as well, like they didn't know anyone that they, you know knew personally or a loved one, someone close to them with the virus. And so when I got it, it was just like, oh my gosh. Um, but I think whenever they got it, it was more so like, okay, we see God at work, you know? Like he spared me, he kept me here for a reason. So let me do what I have to do and then help somebody else. Right. So um, that was, you know, a takeaway as yeah. well. So once we were actually going through the virus, Sam Corinthia, um, it was really like a really good experience for us as sisters, uh, emotionally, spiritually. Spent a lot of time praying. I talk a lot, and so <laughs> when we be sitting at the table, I'm like, okay, everybody sit down. Let's say how you yes. feel today. Like, what are you feeling today? You know, how has this affected you today? What do we need to do? We would watch like TV together. We didn't watch like TV. We watched YouTube. YouTube. Um, we watched YouTube. Uh, we did watch the Clark Sisters. Yeah, we did. Um, Shout out to the Clark. Yeah. <laughs> but we did watch YouTube and we were like, oh, let's watch this. We watched a lot of sermons together. Um, and then I would be like, okay, how did y'all feel at the sermons? Yes. I just, that's just how I, I will say that that for me was something that I really needed. Um, I'm a senior and of course. Oh, yeah. Tell them about you being a senior <laughs> in high school. You know, same as, I'm pretty sure as every other senior, you know, in America right now, just basically trying to figure out how to, you know, get through the last phase of high school through this pandemic. Um, for me, transitioning to um, like an at-home school environment, it really wasn't working, but I found a way to, you know, navigate around it. And it kind of became easy for me. Um, I had a lot of support from my teachers, even when I told them I had the virus. A lot of them were super supportive. But you still had a lot of work. You had a lot of work. Like, I remember senior year, we yeah, barely had any class. I did. Like senior year is like chill. Like she has so much work, and I was just. And like, I'm not really one to even if I am sick, if I'm able to stand up and get out the bed, I'm gonna do my work. Like that's just my personality. So my teachers were like, <laughs> my yeah, I am a nerd. <laughs> my teachers were like, you know, don't worry about doing any work. And I'm over here like it's fine. Like I'll turn it in. Like it's no big deal. Even though it, is that a pizza? That's a pizza. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> so I'm back. Um, but anyways. That was just such an impactful experience for me, and I want to thank both of y'all for pouring so much into me. Like, yeah. we're 10 years apart, and like, that's so real. Like, their maturity level is just, I just learned so much from them. So, for me, learn from you too, but I always say she's wise beyond her years. She is. <laughs> but for me to get that experience, especially before I go off to college, that was something that, like, only God could have done. Because for me to be going into a new chapter and like Chastity said, she lives far away so we don't really get to see each other that much. Like we literally got to spend two weeks together under the same roof in the Bad Girls Clubhouse. <laughs> the bad girl yeah, that's, what we, that's what we called it. But that was just so, so important for me. Um, yeah. You got some really good advice about worship music um, during this period. So share with them about that. Yeah. So my mentor encouraged me just to play worship music I just leave it playing at all times. Um, so like even, it was, it was really helpful for me when I was by myself before they um, got to my house, just because you know, you're isolated and with the virus, like, you know, your symptoms are changing, your sleep patterns are all over the place. Sure. But in those like waking moments and those in-between times, just having that worship music playing was just like so inspiring and just really, you know, kept me going. Yeah, and that was for us too. I remember even when we got here, we just played worship music. And we were just, hey, listen to this song, listen yes, to this song. Yeah. And we were just playing music for each other and just, you know, enjoying each other. So 
So I will say that going through this experience together with my sisters was something that was very special for all of us. We were able to watch God work individually and collectively in our lives. We were able to come together, like Cynthia said earlier, we listened to worship music, we would watch sermons together, pray together, and we realized that we really had to set the atmosphere for God to come in and move and heal us and grow us. And all of our lives were disrupted in different ways, but we were able to overcome it together, and we really had more strength than we thought that we ever did. Yeah, I agree, and I think that I can speak for all of us when I say, like, we didn't even know um, the strength that we held. Like, it was amazing. It was amazing to just see us grow individually, but, like, to see the strength coming from one another, like, that was super motivating. Yeah, and the beauty of it was um, just not being able to see God work in your life, but then able to, being able to see him work in someone else's life at the same time. Yeah. And on so many different avenues, like spiritually and then physically, you know, I'm getting excited whenever, you know, they're feeling better. Yeah. You don't have a fever anymore. And um, just, you know, being able to go through it with them was just something else. Yeah. And something that also helped us, we had so many people who supported us and prayed for us yeah. and sent groceries right to the doorstep. And we just want to say thank you to everybody because we, so much. we weren't alone in this journey at all whatsoever. Yes, and special thank you to our parents. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> just imagine my parents have three daughters, and all three of their daughters tested positive right. for COVID. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot right there. Yeah. And my parents have one grandchild, and they kept my son throughout this whole time when I was dealing with the virus and everything. So just we love our parents, and yeah. we cannot thank them enough for just being there and for everything that they've done throughout this whole time. We love y'all. Yeah. So we just want to share our testimony. And thanks for watching. Bye. And may your bad days prove that God is good. And may your whole life prove that God.